Okay, so we've got a Motorola MEK 6800D2 microcomputer. Uh, it's a like a 6800 series uh, training system from dating back to 1976. Um, as you can see, it's uh, two circuit boards. It's a keyboard display module and the processor board. And it's been uh, built into a, uh, a wooden case uh, and down the front. Uh, we've got a power switch, power light, fuse, and the tape recorder uh, input and output because you can actually uh, save programs to and from cassette tape, believe it or not. Um, obviously, it's a little bit dusty, needs a good clean up. Um, who knows when it was last turned on? It, it could have been 30 years ago that it was last turned on. Uh, there's a few missing integrated circuits. Um, I, I did find the, uh, the manual for this online and it confirms that <clears throat> the, these five integrated circuits are really only uh, the transceivers for driving the expansion bus. Uh, U10 and U12 are optional ROMs and U18 and 19 are optional RAM. So these, these two integrated circuits are uh, 128 by 8 RAM chips, so 128 bytes of RAM in each one, so 256 in total, and you can expand that to 512. Um, yeah, so, so who knows if this thing works. Um, I guess we'll uh, unscrew the boards, uh, have a look what's, uh, what's underneath. Right, so... Oh, the uh, screws are... Uh, I think the holes have been long stripped. It would appear. So, oh, nice length of uh, ribbon cable there, and a homemade power supply down in the bowels of the box. Um, I don't know whether that's based on the uh, recommended circuit design from the manual. Um, I'm leaning towards saying it's probably not. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to trust it. Um, after all these years, who knows what voltage it's outputting. So I'm certainly not going to just blindly plug it in and uh, feed its output into this system because the last thing I want to do is blow the crap out of it. So we'll have a little bit of a snip in here and uh, isolate the power feed going in so that we can hook the bench supply up to it. Uh, wire strip is here somewhere. Because uh, I can current limit the bench supply and I, I can also be confident that it's outputting an appropriate voltage. Um, so if there's any shorts on the board, um, hopefully we won't go up in smoke. Okay, so we will check that the bench power supply leads are not <laughs> shorted. Wind it down to 5 volts. And I don't really have a way of seeing what the current limit's set to other than shorting the leads together and setting it downwards. So we'll go for it's not, not great. I, I've actually got a better power supply on the way, but don't have it yet. So we'll hook our leads up, see what happens. Right, so it's the overcurrent's tripped. Right, so it's 840 milliamps at 5 volts, but we don't have any, we don't have any signs of life. Oh, the voltage has dropped. It's probably just the power supply though. It's not the greatest bench supply. So yeah, 840 milliamps. I believe that's about right.
but uh, yeah, we we are lacking life. Just feeling some chips over here. Make sure nothing's getting hot. No, nothing's hot. Okay. So we'll just put the circuit board back up here where we can see it a bit better. Yeah, we're going to have to do some digging. Um, I guess first cab off the rank is to work out which pins on the various integrated circuits are power. And we'll make sure we're getting power in all the places that we expect to get it. Okay, so according to the destructions, pin 8 on the 6800 should be 5 volts. And we're getting 4.69, 4.7, so it might be a fraction on the low side. Uh, I don't... I have to check the schematics and see if there's a regulator here, but I don't think there is a voltage regulator actually on the boards. Uh, the voltage drop is probably just through the cabling uh, at a guess. Um, so 12 and 15 of U8. Twelve is four point six. Okay, I'm feeling warmth there. And twelve and fourteen. Yeah, four point six seven. So arguably a fraction low. Um, I suppose it just needs a, a reset. Oh, there is actually a sign of life on the LCD display there after you hit reset. Interesting. Oh! Maybe there was nothing wrong with it. Maybe there was actually nothing wrong with it and it just needed a reset. Because I do have the dash prompt up here. So yeah, maybe, maybe there's actually nothing wrong with it. Um, I don't really know how to drive it though. That's the address. Okay, and there's a value of 89 in memory address 1000, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, okay. Ooh, I don't know how you change it though. So I guess that puts AA in 1000, so if I go one. No, I guess it didn't. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to read the manual, learn how to drive this by the look of it. But it this stage maybe this is actually working maybe there's actually nothing wrong with it it just needed a reset to kick it into gear um, ah well that memory location 1000 that is likely to be outside the uh, the whopping 256 bytes of RAM so let's try uh, what's a good memory we got zero zero no Cool. So that's stepping through memory, presumably. So we go one A, so, one A. Let's go E E. I don't know how to drive this. Yeah, so that's intriguing. Let me just repower that again. Right, so when you power it up cold, you get nothing. So yeah, it must need the reset. Hit reset, yeah, and there you go. Huh, so it looks like there's actually nothing wrong with it. Just got to learn how to drive it. And work out what's happening with this power supply and and all the other goodness. Um, hmm, okay, well, 
So far, so good.